this first video is designed to be for noobs, people who really don't know much about uh, Redstone at all, uh, people who love to create, love to build, love to design, and want to do little tiny Redstone projects inside their build, and they want to know the basics so they can maybe do this on their own. So this is a tutorial for those, or for people who are new to Minecraft and you're just learning, and you want to have fun with some of the technical parts of the game, and you can want to make cool inventions and those kind of things. So let's get started. What I have here is mind my skin. <laughs> what I have here is a the basics of powering redstone. So just like electrical wires that run in your house, redstone requires power. So you need a battery. So your phone won't operate unless it has a battery in it. Your lights don't turn on unless they're plugged into the wall. So how do we plug redstone in so that it has power? So that's where we're going to start. So as you can see here, I've set up a couple, or more than a couple, <laughs> a couple things that will demonstrate here how the redstone works. So the first thing that you need to know is there are two blocks or two items in the game which will provide a redstone source. There are many, many, many redstone sources in the game, but these are the two that will always consistently give a redstone signal or power. So this is what we're going to start with. So we have the redstone torch. And we have a redstone block. The redstone block you can make out of nine redstone dust. So when you find redstone down the world, you find nine of them, you can make a block. Now they are always powered. These are basically batteries. The difference is the redstone block is always a battery with does not have an on-off switch. Where a redstone torch is a battery will always power something, but it also has a way to turn it off. And we'll show you those in a few minutes. So when you put a redstone battery down, so a redstone block or a redstone torch, you then have to connect a wire and it will go to an item. Now I'm using a redstone lamp here and so obviously you can tell this lamp is off and this lamp is on. So when the lamp gets power it turns on. Now I can go ahead and put a redstone block right there and it will get power. You don't need the wire. You can actually attach it right to the battery and that works as well. So that's the basics of the battery sources and running wires to power them. If I took that wire out, that lamp goes off. So as you can see, they need to be connected. Another kind of source is, and this is a little weird one if you think about it in real life. You have what's called a switch or a lever. This lever will actually provide power. Now, there's no batteries, so this isn't hooked up to anything. You don't need to hook up the lever, so it's not like a light switch in your house that also has to have electricity. This lever basically just has a built-in battery that you can turn on and off. So as I turn the lever on, it powers the wire, which powers the redstone lamp. You can put the levers directly on the lamp, like this, and you can power it as well, or you can run it with wires so that you can Put a light switch on the wall and turn the lights on on the ceiling type of thing there are also buttons so buttons will also provide a pulse to the redstone so where the lever is either on or off and you can leave it on forever the button will provide a small pulse to the redstone lamp and it will turn on during that pulse a wooden button is exactly the same, just the pulse is a little longer. So a stone button will provide this kind of a pulse, and the wooden button is a little longer pulse, so the light stays on a little longer. Another source of power is that big guy up in the sky, the sun. So we have what are called daylight detectors. So this one right here is like a little solar panel. And when the sun is shining on this, so it needs direct access to the sun, it will power the blocks around it. And that's pretty cool. You also can turn a daylight detector into reverse mode just by clicking on it. So you go back and forth between daylight and nighttime. So reverse mode means when I see the sun, I'm going to turn off. If I don't see the sun, I'm going to turn on. So for instance, if I was to place a block on top of it, that daylight sensor, which is turned into night mode, no longer has direct access to the sun and therefore it powers the block. When I break that block, it's now waiting for night and the block goes off. So those are some basics of 
powering items, so getting light or getting power to the circuit in the first place. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to the next part, which is how do we move signal from one place to another? So as you can see here, I can put redstone dust down and that will power along the whole way. All right, so you can do that. Or you can use blocks to do it. So if I give it a battery here with a redstone torch, that power, that redstone there is powered. It will in fact power this solid block. It, it won't work with glass or other transparent blocks, but solid blocks it will. This block is now powered, which means it can now power all the blocks around it. So this redstone block actually gets powered. All right, so this lamp turns on. In the exact same scenario, beside it here, you can see the same scenario, it will not continue a signal. So it can power the block next to it, but it can't send signal through it. So this redstone is not lit and this lamp is not lit. Because although if I put a lamp on that block, it'll light because it's powered. Those will all be powered, but this one does not. It won't carry a signal through. Another thing that you think about, the block that gets powered is in fact powering all of them around it. So this battery here, or the redstone torch, is powering that wire. And that wire doesn't go sideways. It only goes forward. It's directional. So this white block here is powered. So therefore, any block that's touching it is also powered. And I could go underneath. If I dug a hole underneath, I could put a lamp under that white block, and it would then also be powered. You cannot put signal through glass. As you can see, the exact same scenario I had right here where that is powered. If I use glass, it's not powered. So redstone signal will not go through transparent blocks. Also, those solid blocks that are powered by the redstone will only power the blocks immediately next to it. So if I was to power this lamp, this lamp now gets powered. So anything that's beside it gets powered as well. But two away will not be powered. So if I was to go like that, that would be powered, but that one's not powered. So it only will go one block. As you see, this one is not powered. So that's a little bit about it. Next, you can also go up and down. Moving redstone signals in the vertical direction is just as important as the horizontal direction. So the easiest and the most basic way is just build some blocks up, and the redstone, if you place it on the stairs, it will fill in the vertical direction automatically. So as you can see, this vertical line gets joined, and as long as the redstone creates a continuous line, that lamp gets powered. But you have to be careful. You can't put a block on the corner. So this block here actually interferes and cuts the signal off. It's like putting something or putting a chair on top of a wire and the wire gets bent and it won't work anymore. So putting a solid block in there will in fact break the redstone signal and it won't go through. However, for those builds that you, where you want to protect your redstone and you don't have a lot of room and you got to protect it somehow, you can go ahead and use um, glass or other transparent block. You can also use half slabs. So I could do that, and that also would protect it. And because it's not touching that corner, that signal will still get through, and it will still work. So I can still send signals through either half slabs or through glass blocks, and that way you can still protect your redstone, etc. Especially if you're working underwater and you don't want water to get to your redstone. Water and redstone don't mix. So I'll show you an example a little later on. One of the amazing things I find is that you can actually grow vertically with redstone on half slabs. So as you see here, we power this redstone, and although there's a gap and you can look underneath and you don't see a vertical wire, the redstone on top of this half slab is still powered. And in fact, so is the next one. And the next one, which actually turns that light on. So you can actually use half slabs to step up as well. So maybe if you're short of material, you can use half slabs, which is less material. Redstones will also go in two directions up half slab. So you can go forward in that direction, go back, and that gets powered, and then it goes back that direction again, and the redstone lamp gets powered. 
So you can actually zigzag back and forth to actually go up very high distances. So there's a bunch of basic ways to go up in vertical distances. Another part or property of the battery or the redstone torch is this particular torch, you can actually turn it off. It doesn't always have to be powered. The way you turn it off is you actually power the block it's attached to. So this redstone torch is on this block. So if I was to power this block, this torch would in fact turn off. So I've got a little lever here. I'm going to power that block. So this block is now powered and that torch goes off. That's pretty cool. As you can see here, you can turn them on and off. That's really important when you want to reverse the signal. So you want to say, if I turn the switch on, everything's going to go off. Or if I want to turn the switch off, everything's going to go on. So sometimes you, you want to do it backwards. And this is a great way to switch that. So for instance, if I was to put a redstone torch on top, a redstone lamp on top of this, let's say, there we go. So let's place that there. So right now, that lever is off, but the light's on. If I turn the lever on, the light goes off. So sometimes you want to do that kind of thing in your circuits. Now, what's also cool is you can see here, the torch doesn't need to be on the top. It's just whatever it's attached to. So when this torch is on, it's in fact powering the block beside it, which is this block. This block here gets power from that redstone torch, which then lights that redstone. So if I turn this switch on, this block gets powered, which is attached to the redstone torch, so it turns the torch off. Therefore, this block is no longer powered, meaning that this light goes out. Again, turn the lever off, light goes back on again. So there's many different ways to reverse signals. So there's the basics, and then you can also use this. This trick with putting the torches on the side of the blocks is used all the time because you can control the direction of the flow and what you're going to control. For instance, if I'm right, I'm, I'm doing this right, but if I power this and put that, that's going to be powered by that block, but it's not powered. So that redstone torch will not power this block. So in order to do it, and let's show you a couple different things. If I was to put these like this, that redstone torch will not power these blocks. So as you can see, those blocks are not powered in any way. So the only thing that can happen, and let's do one more snare. Sorry, I broke that early, but let's do one more snare. Let's put it there and then put it there. That redstone torch is not even powering the block it's attached to. It can only power the block above it. So that block actually gets powered like so. That's pretty cool. So you can actually use this torch trick here to power specific things and not other things. The trick of doing uh, powering a block like this is dangerous because everything around it gets powered. But sometimes you only want to power one of them. And that's important to be able to control that, especially when you only have small spaces. And the last thing I'm going to show you about vertical, now we're only going in the up direction, not the down direction. Down direction's another day. We'll cover that in another tutorial. But for now, if you need to go up and turn that light on that's way up there, you can go ahead and flick this lever that lever powers this one, which turns that torch off. So this is not powered, which means that torch stays on. But that torch has powered that block, so that torch gets turned off, which means that block is not powered, which means that torch is on, which then means the light is on. So as you can see, you can alternate torches on and off through signals. And all you do, so right now it's the second and the fourth one that's on. If I flip the switch, it's now the first and the third that's on, and the light is off. So you can use this technique to do a one column height vertical change in redstone signals. That's pretty cool. So you can do a lot of things like putting lights in the ceiling and have the switch down on the floor or do things like that. One more thing that I didn't show you guys that uh, you can use is called the pressure plate. So let me find the pressure plate here. Here they are. 
All right, so you can try it. There's all kinds of different kinds of pressure plates. Let's just stick to a stone one for a second, okay? You can, in fact, put a pressure plate here, and this will allow you to power blocks as well. So when you have this, the, the pressure plate, when you stand on it, it will turn on. And as long as I stay standing on it, that block will turn on. It will not turn on by me throwing things on top of it. Only when a player or a mob stands on it. So if a cow comes into your house and stands on your pressure plate, it's going to activate the lights type of thing. So you have to be careful. So things like that are pretty cool. So you can turn things on and off. One of the important things you need to understand about redstone is what's called signal degradation. So just like electricity, just like yelling at your friends out in the field, the sound of you yelling only goes so far. And the farther you are away from the person yelling, the less likely it is you're going to hear them. So if you're standing right next to, the, next to them, you're going to hear it really loud. But if you're standing far away, you'll hear it very quiet. And redstone's the same thing. So redstone starts with a signal strength of 15. So 15 is what you have to look. And every block that the redstone signal travels, it loses one point of strength. So in other words, at this lever, this is at 15. This is at 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. This block is, is not, in fact, powered by the redstone. It is powered by the fact that that block is powered, which then powers one more. So the redstone is not powering that block. So that is power zero. So this is the first one that's actually powered. And if you look really closely, the signal is really bright here. And as you move along, it gets darker and darker and darker until you get to no signal right here where it's just the boring red. This one here, you look, it's a little bright. And if you keep watching, you'll see the the uh, little flecks and the sparkles coming off of it, meaning that it's powered. So what if I have my light way down at the end, right? So what if I have my light way down at the end and I want to power that light? How do I get the power from the switch way over here to the light? Well, there's this item. This item here is called a repeater. There's a couple things you need to know basics about repeaters. First of all, they will reinvigorate the signal. So in other words, if a signal, no matter where it is, it will boost it back up to 15 again. So that's the first thing. The second thing you need to know about repeaters is they have a delay. So they have what's called a one tick delay. In both Java and in Bedrock, there are 20 ticks per second. So this will delay by 1 20th of a second. And they just say, wow, what's 1 20th of a second? And I'll show you what that is in a minute. But if you put a repeater before block zero, or even at block zero, so this is going to have one power, so it'll get put into here. So if I was to power this, you can see that it's getting darker, getting darker, getting darker, getting darker, almost dark, and then we put a repeater in. Boost the signal back to 15 again, and then it goes on. Ooh, I'm missing a piece of redstone here. So as you can see, that signal of 15 goes on. Now we go 14, 13, 12, 10, 11 etc all the way back down until we hit zero so we still didn't make it to the lamp at the end here we still didn't make it to the lamp at the end but we got a lot further than we did in the first one so what we can do is daisy chain or put multiple repeaters in and if that's the case then we can carry the signal on indefinitely we just need to have a repeater every 15 blocks or so. You can put the repeater anywhere you want, but from where you put it, it will go another 15. So as it goes down, 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 and if we look here, there's the one, there's the zero. So this is proving to me that that is zero, so it is not powering that, but this one is powered. So if I was to make that a solid block, like so, that block is powered, and I can light that up. So this Signal 1 redstone is powering this block, and because this block is powered, this block then gets lit. But the next one won't. If I was to stick another one out here, it won't be lit because this is a block power, and that block power only goes 1. 
So that's pretty cool. And if I go up and left and right, they all get signal because this is a block power, and block power goes in all directions. And if I was to put one underneath, it would be power too. So that's the first and second thing about repeaters. The third thing about repeaters is you can actually delay the signal. So let's have a quick look here. So I've got a redstone signal here. I've got repeaters there, repeaters there. Watch closely at how fast the signal moves along the redstone. If I click on here, the one on the left is instant. All of, all of them light up all at the same time. If you're looking at the one in the middle, it lights up sort of as it travels down. And the one on the right goes really slowly as it travels. Why does it do that? So here's why. A redstone repeater you can click on. And as you see, we can move this little stick. And that's position one, position two, three, and four. So every time we move this position, it adds one tick of delay. So this would be one tick of delay, two ticks of delay, three ticks of delay, and four ticks of delay. So if I put it there, each signal gets delayed by one tick. So it appears like it's slowly moving along. On this one here, I've set them all to three ticks. So in other words, this is a one tick delay, this is a three tick delay. So this one will take three times longer for the signal to travel because every time it hits a repeater, it pauses and stops for three ticks before the signal carries on. Just to summarize, let's show that one more time. So even turning it off, that signal takes time. So as I click on it, the one on the left is instant, the one on the right is fairly quick but definitely has a delay and the one on the right has a even greater delay. I can put that up to four ticks and that would be even slower. So how do redstone circuits actually move? So as you can see here I've got a bunch of little network of redstone here but note as I place the redstone now it looks like it's shooting off to the left but when I put it here it joins it up automatically. And that's really important for you to understand because a signal will only travel in the direction that it's going. So if I click that, you can see that this signal just sort of keeps going around in circles and keep bugging itself. But it doesn't actually attach itself to this block here. So these lights are not on. This signal goes straight into that block through the line going straight into it. So that block gets powered. That's pretty important to understand that. Now, you can use repeaters to also control the block. So as you can see here, in the other one, this, this redstone goes both backwards and to the left. But because I threw a repeater here, it blocks the signal from traveling sideways. Although the repeater is a powered device, that power will not transfer sideways. It will only go in a straight line. And in fact, the repeater is directional. It will only go in that direction. If I was to put this repeater in backwards, it wouldn't work. It would just stop the signal dead. So if I turn this on, you can see that all three get powered. This one is powered by this redstone dust. This one is powered by that redstone dust. And this repeater carries the signal through with no interference from the side and goes through. If I was to take this out, you can see these ones are still powered. But if I was to put a redstone dust right there in the middle, those ones actually get blocked off. So it's a matter of understanding how you can use, use repeaters to run multiple redstone lines side by side. And here's a really good example. So this is redstone that goes into three repeaters. And then there's redstone right beside it. Although I haven't joined it here, I wanted to show you that this redstone will not get a power from these repeaters. Like so. So the repeaters do not travel sideways. So these, these redstone do not get powered. That's pretty cool. Alright, one more thing I want to show you is the delay again. So this particular circuit here has no repeaters in it whatsoever. If I click this, they all come on all at the same time. And it's instant. On, off, on, off, and it's instant. However, in this circuit, I've put four repeaters in, so no repeater, a one tick repeater, a two tick repeater, three tick repeater, and a four tick repeater. When I go and flick this lever here, you can see that the time that the lights come on is slightly delayed. So you can make a really cool effect um, 
and move and have it so that it's like it's moving along and that's really cool so you can so you can see here if you flick it you can actually make a pretty cool effect and then we'll do the same thing except we're going to add multiple repeaters so each repeater this is a one tick repeater so each repeater is one tick so this is going to be a total of four tick delay these are two tick delay uh, repeaters so this is going to be an eight tick delay three tick repeaters so it's going to be a 12 tick delay and these are four tick repeaters so this is going to be a 16 tick delay which is which is almost a full second so when we run this you can see that there's a much larger delay there than there was here and so you can use repeaters to time things exactly when you want them to happen and if you're counting ticks you can even say okay I want this to happen at tick 4 and I want this to happen at tick 8 so let's say you're conducting music you can make quarter notes half notes whole notes and you can time them to be exactly what you want by inserting different tick settings on repeaters that you put into place or if you need instant signal don't put any repeaters at all so anyways that's all the time I have for today there is lots and lots and lots more to this but this is just the basics many of you if you are new to this you're gonna have to pause rewind and look at a few of those things so in this series we're gonna use these basic concepts that I showed you today plus a few more and we're gonna build redstone doors and and flying machines and all kinds of cool things we will build during this tutorial series but I wanted to start at the absolute basics and that's where I've done that today so we are going to use these concepts to make clocks to make uh, repeating tools to make uh, mine carts that unload and reload automatically and all kinds of really cool things and railroad train stations that will turn you in different directions depending on what button you push and some really cool things that we'll design during this tutorial series so if you want to follow the series and learn as we go make sure you get this video understand it and then we can move forward so as always thank you for watching if you liked what you saw hit that like button and if you want to see some more great content on the next video in the series, hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell so it notifies you when the next video gets released. See you in the next one.